الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله continue on in our study of the book of Iman by Imam Abu Ubaid Al Qasim ibn Salam رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة this will be the last lesson from the series and in fact this study is not of the is not inclusive of the whole treaties of the book of the asl in the Arabic text because the Arabic text is a is actually about twice the length of where we will be stopping there are many other benefits from that great Imam but however as far as the English translation This is the end of the treaties or of that which has been translated. And due to time restraints or constraints, we will not be finishing the complete book, but hopefully at some time in the future. And the benefits that we can gain just from this first portion of the treaties that has been translated gives us an excellent understanding of the madhab of the Salaf al-Salih Ridwan Allahi alayhim in transmitting the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and part of that Aqidah is refuting Ahl Bidah and refuting the Shubahat or the doubtful issues that are with uh, Ahl Bid'ah and the Mukhalifin, those who differ with the Madhab of the Salaf. And a point I want to mention when we talk about Mukhalifin, because unfortunately many people practice this, especially the Hizbis and those people who fall into Hizbiyah by saying that the fact that you differed with me or you differed with my sheikh, then you are a mukhalif. No. Al mukhalif is the one who differs with the haq. It's the one who differs with the truth. Not differs with you or your party or your group or your clique or your his. So it's very, very important for us to have that understanding because unfortunately many of us, this was the tarbiyah that we received the way we were raised in uh, the deen which was a mistake which is a severe mistake and unfortunately there are still many people who practice this who say you're either with us or against us which is almost a more George Bush mentality rather than the uh, Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and so it is more in alignment with the Khawarij and those other deviant sects than in alignment with uh, the uh, Itaqad of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the Madhab and the Minhaj of the Salaf al-Saleh. So continue on in our study. Uh, Imam Abu Ubaid, Rahmatullah Ali, Rahmatullah Wasiyah, we left off and he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is in relation to Iman uh, uh, being comprised of deeds as well, that actions are a part of Iman and that Iman has different levels and Tafadl and it has different levels and some deeds are better than others. All of these things are a part of understanding the Iman of Ahl Sunnah and what Iman uh, is to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So we mentioned the ayat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجَلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَقَّلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem uh, Verily, the believers are those who when Allah is mentioned their hearts uh, fill, fill with fear and when they hear His verses mentioned, uh, read that it increases their iman. And that's the shahid of the verse. That's the main point of this verse. Zadatun imana. 
uh, it, it feel it, it it increases their iman, letting us know what iman increases. It increases, and likewise, what is in the implication here that it decreases? And then wa'ala rabbihim yatawakkalun, and upon their Lord they rely. They have tawakkal. Up to the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Ulaika humum minuna haqqa. Verily, those are the true believers. Those are the true believers. So Allah did not give faith a reality except with action. Upon these conditions mentioned in the verse, and the one who thinks that merely a saying makes one a true and complete believer, even if there is no action accompanying that saying, is one who is opposing the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Iman Abu Ubaid, he says, فَلَمْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْإِيمَانِ حَقِيقًا إِلَّا بِالْعَمْلِ He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give Iman uh, that he did not articulate for us that Iman had a, a, a real true reality except with deeds, meaning that deeds are a part of Iman. Actions are a part of Iman, a part of faith. And in this regard, Shaykh Al-Salaam Ibn Taymiyyah said, in regards to the mistakes of the Murjia, he said, From the third, the third uh, mistake from the many mistakes that they have, he said, "Athalith, zannihim, an al iman al ladi fi qalb yukun tamman biduni shay min al amal, wali hada yajalun al al amal yajalun al amal thamrat al iman." So he said, and from amongst the mistakes of the Murjia is their belief that faith is in the heart and that faith in the heart is uh, complete without doing any actions, without doing any deeds. Okay, let me clarify that. Meaning that the Murjia believe that Iman is in total, is totally complete. One is a full believer. Either you're a full believer or you are a disbeliever. Best. This is what the Murjia believe. So you either have full Iman, and it's because of what's in your heart only, or you have no Iman, meaning you don't you don't believe in your heart, and you maybe testify in your tongue that you don't believe, you know, you're a Christian, you're a Jew, whatever the case may be. Because they believe that Iman, ultimately, is just an action of the heart. Or, as we mentioned prior to this, the various types of Murdia, that some believe it's a statement of the... Uh, statement statement of the tongue and actions of the heart and some believe you know they have various manifestations of your job but what they share in common and what makes them murjia is that uh, amal deeds are not a part of iman they are not a part of faith and so then they believe for example the one who says they're a muslim You know, and of course we can't cut open their heart and know what's in their heart. And so they believe they, they believe they're a Muslim. And he commits zina. He drinks wine every night. He smokes weed and does all kind of major sins. Okay? Major sins that don't take him out of the fold of Islam. We're not talking about major kofar and major shirk. We're talking about major sins, the major sins. That this person to the Murjia is a full believer. They have full Iman. That's it, khalas. He is like the, the Alam who stays away from all those sins and does the 
the extra deeds and teaches the people their religion and practices what he preaches, they're the same. Likewise, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. Their iman is like that, that fasik to the murjiyah. Why? Because deeds are to them are not a part of iman. And that iman it doesn't fluctuate. That it's, it's complete. It's either complete or it's totally non-existent. This is what the murjiyah believe. Likewise, as we spoke about this before, the Khawarij also believe that Iman is either uh, complete or it is non-existent. This is why they make takfir to the believers for the major sins. They say, huh, you're making a major sin. You're a disbeliever. Khalas, you're drinking wine? Kafir. This one uh, uh, is doing this? Kafir. 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 They make takfir for the major sins because for them, like the Murjia, they believe Iman is either totally present, 100%, or it is non-existent. Except for they, the, the Murjia, go to the Janib of Rahmah. They go to the, they lean towards leniency and mercy completely. They go to the full extreme with that. Meaning they can do anything, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful, yes. And he's also Shadid al -Iqab. He also get stern in his, severe in his punishment. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that you can't just get away with sin and think there's no recompense for that. But the Murjiya, no, because actions are not a part of Iman. So the actions, that's not affecting Iman to them because it's complete. Likewise, we said the Khawarij also believe Iman is full, 100%, and that deeds, uh, that, uh, you know, Iman, it doesn't fluctuate. Khalas, you're either a full believer or you're a disbeliever. This is why for them, they lean towards the punishment. That's why uh, the scholars refer to them as the wa'idiyya. The, uh, you know, some of the groups in the Ma'tazila as well, that they are the people who lean towards the harshness and the, the, the punishment, the promise and the threat of punishment. Because for them, they don't look to the verses of mercy and so forth. For them, you're either a disbeliever or you're a believer. And if you're doing major sins, you're a disbeliever to them. So I hope that's understood. So it shows us the danger of holding these beliefs in that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and this is the Intiqad of Abu Ubaid, and that he is trying, he is articulating very well in his treaties that this is the Iman, this is the Intiqad of Ahlul Sunnah, the Madhab of Ahlul Sunnah, the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, and understanding this Mas'ala of Iman. And then he said, he said, and from those things that clarify the differing levels of Iman in the heart is his saying, I mean the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O you who believe, when the believing women come to you as fugitives, test them. Allah knows best their faith. Then if you ascertain that they are true believers. Here he says, do you not see that here there is a level less than the complete faith? The complete level and that Allah has addressed the believers to test other believers. And likewise is saying, oh you believe, believe in Allah and his messenger. So if this was not a command to increase in one's faith, then there would be no meaning in ordering the believers to believe in Allah and His Messenger. So I believe that's very clear. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The waj uh, the uh, uh, that Imam uh, 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 Abu Ubaid is mentioning here. He's very clear in explaining what he meant by these, by using these uh, verses. That here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding in the first ayat commanding to test the believing women meaning that they're already affirmed that they're believing women testing them with regards to the level of their iman otherwise there would be no benefit in, in testing them and likewise as he mentioned so if this was not a command to increase in one's faith oh you who believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the mu'mineen he's not addressing the kafirin 
and Munafikin. He's not addressing the hypocrites and the disbelievers or all of mankind, or rather he says, uh, Amanu, O you who believe, believe in Allah and his messenger. So he's telling you to strive more in your belief, letting us know that belief can fluctuate, that it can go up, and likewise it can reduce or decrease. Then he said, mentioning the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if have kareem, alif na mim, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested. And we tested those who were before them. And Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true. And will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have kareem, of mankind, there are some who say we believe in Allah, but if they are made to suffer for the sake of Allah, they consider the trial of mankind as Allah's punishment. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have kareem, and that Allah may test or purify the believers from sins and destroy the disbelievers. Abu Ubaid comments, Rahmatullahi So do you not see Allah trying the believers to attest their saying with action and not being pleased with their merely affirming the shahada without accompanying it with action? So what is there to be followed after the book of Allah, the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the guidance of the salaf after him. Those who are our noble role models in imams. So here Abu Ubaid, rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatullahi wasi, and he's showing us the master, a talaqi the place in which, where we take our religion from. We take it from the Book of Allah, and we take it from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, and we take it from the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala in Ajma'een, Tabi'een, Witba'a Tabi'een, and those who follow them in righteousness until the Day of Judgment. So this is how we, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, understand our religion, which differs with many, if not all the sects of Islam. They may take from here and there, but they don't take that complete talaqi and the understanding, with the understanding of the self, that this is how they deviate and how they go astray. Because it isn't that all the sects, all the sects, they have some batil with them. But they differ with regards to their level of deviance. Some of them take a lot of kitab and a lot of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they don't follow the method of the self. Or they follow the self in some issues but they leave off others. And likewise, then there are some who don't, who ignore the Salaf. And there are some who belittle the Sunnah. And so people have different levels, and the Ahl Bid'ah has different levels, as we mentioned. But Ahl Sunnah, they go back to the guidance of the Salaf, as he said, because those are noble uh, Imams. They set the pace for us. They were the ones who articulated and wrote for us those books that gave us the correct understanding of the Book of Allah and the Son of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. This section of the treaties ends with Imam Abu Ubaid saying, Rahmatullah So what have the scholars stated about this matter which we have declared to be the Sunnah? It is none other than that we have stated in this book of ours that faith consists of intention, saying and action together, and that it has levels, some above others, and that its first and highest level is the testification with the tongue as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the hadith in which he made faith to have 70 odd branches. So if someone were to articulate this shahada and accept that which has come from Allah, the appellation of faith becomes incumbent upon him due to his entering as he increases in obedience and taqwa to Allah his faith increases so letting us know that again faith increases it decreases and the evidence is ample from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that faith is comprised of those three components 
it is comprised of belief in the heart, statements of the tongue, whether that be the shahada and dhikr and all of those statements of the tongue, the goodness that is uttered on the tongue, and also a part of faith, a part of faith is deeds, actions. So salat, zakat, hajj, uh, all, all of the actions, those righteous deeds, bitter walidain, being righteous to one's parents, uh, all of those actions of the limbs, removing something harmful from the road, from the people. This is a part of Iman, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. So all of those things comprise Iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Imam Abu Ubaid and all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah for their transmitting this imperative knowledge for us to understand on how to come closer to our Lord how to worship our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to understand our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the correct interpretation of Islam, which comes from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the madhab of the Salaf al-Salih. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And thus ends our study of the main, the first half of the treaties, Kitab fil Iman, Lil Imam Abi Ubaid al Qasim bin Salam al Harawi, Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatul Wasiya. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم